order. Today is June 14th, 20 to have an amended staff report. Hearing number two has been withdrawn. So would anybody like to make a motion to accept the amended staff report? I'll make a motion that we accept the amended staff report. Thank you. I'll, I'll second. second that. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, did anybody have a chance to look at minutes? Did everything look okay from the May 10th meeting? Would anybody like to make a motion to accept the minutes from the May 10th, 2023 meeting? I'll make a motion we accept the minutes from the May uh, 10th, 2023 meeting. Thank you. I'll second. second motion. <laughs> we have a first and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Um, board actions that were approved. Um, Megan, did you want to go over those from the last meeting? I can, Madam Chair. Um, we did have all three of the hearings that we heard last month. They did all go before the board. All of them did get approved. Um, one of the things that we did end up adding um, was to the variance for Susan Chapman's basically kind of clarifying the language that we had talked about in the PNZ meeting and tying that to the conditional use permit to where as long as there's a valid conditional use permit on the property for Susan Chapman, she doesn't have to go back through that variance process. So okay. here in two years, when she needs to renew the conditional use permit, it'll just be the conditional use permit okay. and not the variance. So just more clarifying language that we added as a condition okay, on perfect. that. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Well, we will jump into public hearing number one, Sunlight Services. It's a conditional use permit. Permit. I can't talk this morning for an impound salvage and storage yard. Turn it over to you, Megan. All right, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the property owner of Foothills Lot 2 is Joseph G. Flyme. Um, he's doing business as Sunlight Services, which is a towing impound and salvage business. Um, the location of the property is Foothills Lot 2, um, and the address is 18 Wilkins Peak Drive. The current zoning of the property, which is great, it's heavy industrial, um, so um, we're covered there as far as zoning goes. It is also located within the growth management area and also the growth management highway overlay area, which when we get into it a little bit further will kind of trigger um, uh, the purpose for some of the conditions that uh, I um, put on the, the permit for this. Um, plenty of existing infrastructure on the site. There is a, a building in the middle of the property, has two accesses coming in and out. Um, West Side Water and Sewer District, City Rock Springs Water, um, Fire District Number One is the responder, and then of course Rocky Mountain Power, and then Dominion Energy Natural Gas with the access being the county road that runs right in front of the property. Um, as you can see in the zoning map, um, the blue hatch is where the highway overlay um, goes into, and this covers the entire portion um, of the property. So the entire boundary of the property exists within this. Um, when Mr. Flyme came in and applied for um, this conditional use permit, um, he knows the process very well. He also owns another property, actually two other properties within the subdivision. One is another lot um, located at 32 Wilkins Peak Drive and he is um, running his business, Sunlight Services, out of that. And he also owns the land in which Stoffer's Towing, which is on the south side of the property, or of the subdivision, a little more on the west side, that um, Stoffer's Towing and Recovery one runs their business out of. Um, I don't know if you guys remember those public hearings. They got renewed indefinitely back in 2020. Um, and when Joseph turned in this application, um, he stated, I'm needing more room to expand my business and would like to start another location for an impound salvage and storage yard. Hence why we are here today. Um, as you can see, the property is pretty open. It does have the one building right in the middle. There are two existing accesses um, off of Wilkins Peak Drive. There is fencing, um, I believe, around the entire property. Um, one of the as you're, when I went out and was kind of looking at the property, when you're driving south on 191, 
um, because of the location of the property, you can see the building that's located there and just something I wanted to make sure with it being within the highway, the scenic highway overlay district that we tried to do what we could to help um, shield the, the towing and salvage yard with that. Um, as you can see, Mr. Zimmerman went out and posted on site um, per statutory requirements. Um, and we'll just jump straight into uh, the specific requirements that deal with the uh, impound salvage and storage yard. The first being it cannot be established within a 600 feet of a church school or residential zone district or within one mile of a recreational facility. Um, we are well away from any of those things. It's located in an industrial subdivision. Um, there are other similar activities um, such as this that are already currently operating in the subdivision as well. Um, criteria B, hazardous waste inventory um, and possible storage or discharge of hazardous waste applicant will be responsible for maintenance and proper disposal methods um, in conformity with all DEQ regulations. I'm gonna combine the special requirements for C and D, both of which are talking about the screening, uniform build and things like that. Um, and just the permanent construction of at least a six foot um, fence above finished grade. The parcel is surrounded by agricultural land to the north and has the Bitter Creek um, running to the north of the property as well. To the east of the property, it's light industrial and everything to the west and south is heavy industrial. Um, with the property being located within the growth management highway overlay, it will trigger some following requirements. Um, all outside storage and work areas visible from the designated highway will need to be screened. Displays of products for merchandise purposes will not need to be screened. Um, I don't think we're going to run into that one on, on this one, but no storage shall be visible um, above the fence when standing at ground at the lot line. Screening shall be a maximum of six feet above finished grade, and the director may approve alternate screening plans and methods. Um, because the structure is located in the middle of the property, it does not help with screening as some of the other properties we've done in the past. There's no, there's not really any natural screening to this property. Um, due to this, staff is going to recommend 100% screening around all four uh, boundaries of the property, including the gates, both gates going into the property off of Wilkins Peak Drive. Um, criteria E, no stacking of vehicles is allowed over six feet unless approved by the board. Applicant is requesting um, to be allowed to stack vehicles over the six foot height. Um, due to this being located within the highway overlay district as well, um, staff believes that it would be kind of moot to allow the stacking to go over since it is very highly visible from Highway 191. Um, if the board does approve the applicant's request, staff would recommend that they establish a maximum height of which stacking would be allowed um, if they did choose to approve that condition as requested by the applicant. Um, the business must be licensed with the state of Wyoming. Um, Mr. Flime has uh, actually holds a current permit with the state for both of his locations at 18 Wilkins Peak Drive and the 35 Wilkins Peak Drive. Um, and the last special requirement is typically uh, the first go around when we have a new location for an impound storage and salvage yard. It's um, typically term for two years before it needs to be renewed. Um, subsequent conditional permits may be termed for a period established by the board. Staff recommends um, continuing with the two years as long as Joseph Lyme stays in um, compliance with all state and county regulations. Uh, we did put this out for a public and agency comment. Uh, we received the two comments back. Um, as always, Colorado staff, Interstate Gas does not have um, any assets in this location and YDOT had no comments or concerns as well. Staff recommends approval of recommendation 2306-0-01, uh, the conditional use permit for the impound salvage and storage yard operated by Joseph Lime Sunlight Services with the following six conditions. 
the conditional use permit is personal to Joseph Lyme for 18 Wilkins Peak Drive. The conditional use permit is approved for a period of two years from the date of approval for the board by the Board of County Commissioners. The conditional use permit is in effect as long as the business remains in compliance with county regulations and holds a valid Wyoming vehicle storage and disposal license. 100% screening will be required along the entire property, including the gates along Wilkins Peak Drive. Vehicles cannot be stacked higher than six feet and vehicles, trailers, et cetera, must be stored within the screened fenced area. That's all I have, Madam Chairman, and the applicant is here today. Thank you. Mr. Flame, would you like to come up and add anything or say anything to Megan's presentation? Yes, please. Uh, Joseph Lyme, I live in Rock Springs, Wyoming. Oh, there you go. Because everybody on Zoom has to hear you too, sorry. <laughs> My name is Joseph Lyme. I live in Rock Springs, Wyoming. I'm the owner of 18 Wilkins Peak Drive. Uh, the uh, only issues I might have on this is, like I say, I'd like to be able to stack vehicles like my other yard is and the 100% screening. Okay. Which I understand the 100% would be a lot, but okay, thank you. Is there anything else you would like to add? Um, per se? No, I guess I could answer questions if you- Does anybody have any questions for the applicant? Yes, I, I, Mr. Flynn, I do. Um, is it in the back of your property, Border Spirit or Creek, correct? That is correct. Uh, is there a berm or anything to keep the hazardous waste from going into the creek? There is a berm. There is a berm there. So you have containment for the whole site, basically? A berm along the creek. I'm just, I'm just thinking, because you're hauling in wrecked vehicles and everything, you know, I just don't want any leakage or you get in trouble with the EPA or anything, or DEQ. Well, we don't have too much problem with that. We've always been good with containing vehicles in the past that come in under that type of circumstance. You know, we try to mitigate it right away and like get the other property. We have a cement pad, you know, that we can put vehicles on. And in this property, we have a building with a cement floor to put vehicles on. So you don't store, you don't store any hazardous waste, you know, example, antifreeze oil from the, uh, from the vehicles you tow or anything no like large that. quantities no just whatever's in the vehicle you just basically it just stays in the vehicle you don't basically okay, okay. anybody else have a question for the applicant uh just one uh recommendation on the screening if 100 percent is too much what what would you propose uh i would like to just screen along the front of the property. The it'd be the Wilkins Peak Drive from one corner to the other, like the uh, my other similar lot. I mean, let me uh, let me find where I'm kind of at here. In the uh, the overlay. Uh, okay, this property is located within the GMA highway overlay area mm -hmm. okay and part of the conditions of that you know uh all outside storage and work areas visible from the designated highways shall be screened uh i'm almost the only person out there out of all the businesses down both sides of the road i think there's two more that have any screening uh one might be Bunnings Pipe Yard further down to the jail. And one is across from Wilkins Peak Drive. I don't know the business name. Uh, but I mean, by reading that, all businesses would have to be completely screened, whether they have a conditional use permit or not. And it's, you know, it's not. It's just in the area. It's heavy industrial. I have a cement plant behind me. I have an asphalt plant across the street. We have uh a company that fills up mine voids just it's big industrial area you know no commercial no residential there's caretaker shacks in the area but you know they accept that they 
live in an industrial area. So that's why I'd like to still be able to stack and less screening. The screening doesn't hold up to the elements. I mean, the wind it really takes a toll on fences, oh, yeah. you know, stuff like that. And like I say, I'm surrounded by other businesses, but they're not junkyards. They have plenty of junk, but they're, they're, <laughs> they're, not, junkyards. they're not junkyards. <laughs> so, I mean, the dumps, you know, yeah. when you see the scenic part, we're not quite the scenic yet where I'm at. You know, it's on the way to scenic. Once we get to the, the top up there, yeah. that first fire hole road, then we start seeing mm -hmm. scenic. Okay. Well, Mr. Flynn, what's the business to the west? What is that? To the west of me? Yeah, to the west of me. Uh, I think it's called the first one. Yeah, the only one with the building uh, next to you here. As I'm looking, it'll be on the left hand. That should be the building, the first building next to the highway from me is oh, I don't know if you can see this this one right here oh that's Yotex Energy Oil Field okay and they are a roustabout uh, general oil field construction company and so they haven't they haven't uh, I Megan didn't get any uh, comments back from them because I'm, I'm I agree with him with the there's. I, I don't see putting a slats in the back side of the fence. I just, I mean, I, I realize that's in the GMA area, but it's also on the boundary. It's quite a ways from the highway, but you have the property, to, you know, you do have a business to the west of you and possible business to the east of you also. Um, the stacking, I I agree with the, with the county here with the six feet maximum, because you don't want to impede on them I can see that, but I can also see your point on the fence because putting those slats in the fence, yeah. it does destroy the fence and it doesn't, you know, it's a hell of a lot of cost for you. I do agree with that. But I'm just, but you hadn't heard anything. Nobody had heard anything from those people. No, oh, Madam Chair, we've not received any negative comments okay. when we put this out or any calls coming into the office on this okay. one. You're just reasoning for the stacking. You just want to be able to put more vehicles in there. How often do you get rid of them? It just depends on the market, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, stacking was never even an issue. I got my first permit in the beginning of 2012, end of 2011, right in that ballpark, you know. And stacking wasn't an issue at that time. Uh, having a junkyard and commercial property wasn't an issue at that time. That's about when uh, Ray Black, where Dave Burns' yard is, you know, it's next to a restaurant in the mm -hmm. middle of a trailer court. It wasn't an issue. Mm -hmm. The stacking came about because one guy had 35 acres. I had one acre. The gentleman, and that's, this is even in the newspaper article, uh, how can the county let someone in, come in and compete with me? after I just started my yard. And so there was a commissioner involved and stacking came across to limit competition. And that's a fact, because I had one acre and I made it work, you know, with airspace. Yeah. And that's how stacking came about. This wasn't an issue until 2012. And then 2012, then came 2013, then about 2015, a lot of these rules came about where you couldn't have a towing business or a junkyard in a commercial zone, you know? So it wasn't ever an issue until it was, it was to limit competition. I don't know the reason why that. Well, a lot of the people in this room are familiar with what went on back then. And, you know, they, they under, they know the, people who complained. And like I say, it's all in a newspaper article about it being unfair for me to compete. And that's actual wording in a front page newspaper article. The only thing I'm, I, I don't know the reasons stacking for the stacking. Is, but, stacking is due to my space. Uh, yeah, what I can't I'm, find that much land around here. Yeah, what I'm getting at, I, I don't know the reason for the stacking, but the, what I worry about is because you're close to Bitter Creek, you know, the, the waste oils and the antifreeze in the vehicles, if you do crush and stack, I mean, the, and you do say you have a berm around there. I mean, that would have to be. Yeah, there's a berm along the creek. I mean, we 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 
we know better than to contaminate the ground. Mm -hmm. That's the last thing we even want to do. Well, I saw one, yeah, just not in this county, another county, a lady had me go over and look at, and it was a mess. There, You'd walk on the ground, and you were actually pushing oil up with your feet. Up in Kimmer. Yep. You probably know where I'm talking about then. Norm Reimer. Yep, you do. And we just don't want that. And that's why I don't know why the stacking. I mean, I'm just going to go with the rate, you know, what the recommendations are from our. Uh, from stacking our is due to space. I mean, it's, Sweetwater County is probably one of the only places with that rule in place. Uh, most every movie, TV show you see, the reality shows, all junkyards, they they stack their inventory, you know, and it don't make sense for me to crush a car and then. So how, how high are you? How, how high do you want to stack? At my other yard, I, I stack about 18 foot high. That's as high as my excavator reaches. And that's roughly about five vehicles, give or take, a, you know, a few feet between pickup trucks and cars. You might stack five cars. You might only get four pickup trucks. And that's a, about as high as a semi trailer, which I will be bringing semi trailers in. Semis at fourteen, and you're four yeah. feet above that. Yeah, yeah, uh, roughly. Yeah, that's still. I, I, I'm sorry, Joey, but that's 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 a lot. That's pretty high. And I mean, if I'm the business to the west of you, I would have an issue with that. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. That's my thought. Okay. Uh, I can see stacking, and uh, but I can't see stacking eighteen feet. I'm sorry, but. Um. I understand you have a limited space. You also said you also have other properties, correct? Yeah. You stack uh, on any of those? Yeah, there's a property. It would be to the south. On I think on the second map, you can kind of see an aerial. And you do stack over six feet on that one? Yeah, they're stacked about, like I said, between 14 to 18 feet in that range there about a you know a little probably a little over a semi-trailer some a little under a semi-trailer and you have buildings along both sides of you on that one too yes and no no issues no no okay. issues all right i have uh yeah i have buildings behind that one i have buildings across the street and to the sides i think you can see it on there well i've I, I seen one page where it showed it well, I can see the buildings. I can see how the loop on uh, the road goes, and I'm assuming I'm assuming you're you're on this back side. I don't know if you can see. That. You're talking about one of these over here, correct? Oh, uh, right there. This is my this is my stopper's yard right here. This is my yard right here. So it's that. And you stack high on that one and that one, both of them. No, this is a. I rent this one to another company. Oh, so but this one you stack? Yeah, this is. This is fully, oh, okay. fully stacked and it's stacked on the back fence and it's also stacked along this front fence that borders this. Okay. Broken is and that in the center of the loop? Yeah. Yep. And I've got buildings on both sides and like I say, across the street uh, behind me. Madam Chair. Yes. Can I add some points please. of clarification? Yes. Um, Jennifer, would you mind switching to the PowerPoint, please? Okay, I'll pull pull this a little bit more into view. So the property I currently have selected is the one that we're looking at for this conditional use permit. And then this is Joey's existing property mm -hmm. um, right here. When I went out to the site and came off Curl Jacks and started heading south, because of the location of his existing property, there's buildings and, excuse me, buildings and things surrounding it. So it creates that natural screening. Um, I know it is an industrial park, but one thing, the reason why the um, highway scenic overlay district was added was to try and keep areas where people are coming into town, coming off the interstate, um, just trying to clean up view. And also um, one thing with screening, I know it may not, block everything in the property but one thing that it does is it creates a visual break when you're driving down the road and helps um, just people looking at the property mm -hmm. um, with that so that that was my reasoning for requiring screening around um, basically as you're driving south on 191 you can see the entire bits of the property um, coming around that and um, I, I know there weren't complaints by other um, 
neighbors or anything like that, but even on um, his existing property at 35 Wilkins Peak, it is screened in the front and then it's screened partially up both sides. I don't know how far exactly, um, but I, I mean, if you guys are wanting to look at something different, we can definitely discuss some of those options. That's more just where I was coming from with my recommendations. Most of them are based off of uh, just regulations that we have within our, our code. Thank you. Any other questions for the applicant? We've gone through a few of these impound yards and stuff like that. And I'm pretty sure on every one I can remember, we haven't allowed anybody to stack. You know, so this, what's, what's there previously was before we were here. We've been pretty diligent about trying to keep stuff down, uh, a clean look. And I'm all for impound yards. Uh, the county, we just did yeah. the one for the county. They had to screen and they have to stack or they can't stack. So I'm like, what? I'm like, we need to hold everybody to the same standards as we're doing stuff. Um, can't a little bit more favored over here or anything. And that's my point is I think we need to hold everybody to the same standard. Is, I, is, I yeah, that? I'm looking for input because I'm also the same guy that thinks you should be able to do whatever you want with your land. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and I, I'll, I think that's part of it. Uh, during my processes, I've always went with heavy industrial. Mm -hmm. Several other yards that have been done for the in a, or in lighter industrial or well like uh we'll just use a burn stilling for example they mm -hmm. renewed last week well when they started out in 2013 that was commercial property mm -hmm. okay renewed 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 uh maybe within the last two years it's been moved to some type of industrial zone it's right. been upgraded to an industrial property i mean it's still you know there's a trailer court it's in the middle of a trailer court there's a restaurant, there's a church across the street. No problem here. Uh, LJD just came in and got the variance for their impound yard, commercial zoned houses. You know, I, I went above most of the zoning requirements of other properties that have been granted the permit to, I go with the heaviest, I, if I could go heavier than heavy industrial, I would. And I think what you're doing is you're in the right spot. You know, I go as high as I, I can. I and I should, I, I mean, those guys are in lesser intense zoning. I do a little bit more than them with my business, with the crushing of. You got a crusher out there? Or? Big back though. We, we flatten them out for storage purposes, you know, otherwise you end up with. <laughs> yeah. You know, one car, one space. This way I can get about four to five vehicles in a space. And like I say, that's why I go with heavy industrial versus the other guys going with lesser zoning. And I just happen to be in some scenic overlay district <laughs> where it's not at all scenic. Yeah. You know, I mean, I can see the dumps, metal pile stacked. 30, 40 foot high from my yard. You know, that's something everybody passes. They pass a dump in this scenic district and you can look right down in the pit from the highway. And like I say, I'm surrounded by industrial. I have a, I have some property going out on 191 and I had some concrete I was going to use for a future project for that project. The one of the commissioners called me, it was a scenic view area. He said, Casey he says, you have to get that concrete. I says, it'll be placed here within, give me a month. But there, there are the rules. I mean, people do complain. I mean, he complained to me. He had people complain to him about the concrete that I had stacked for, a, uh, for an armoring of, of a ditch and on that property, that specific property. So I get it. I mean, I, I, I know where you're coming from, but I've followed the same rules that uh, you have to follow. Oh, I understand. Yeah. I, like I say, I follow the you know, I follow the rules, but like I said, no one else in this area, they're all required to screen, but that's not mandated. Everybody, conditional use or no. They're like I said before, they're I, all I, required to the, but you know, the next guy, he's stacking pipe X amount high, 
they're standing vessels up for mm -hmm. tanks that are, you know, X amount high. They're standing workover rigs up. But that's not considered salvage. I mean, when it's people, a, yeah, that's a, yeah. exactly, yeah. those people that, uh, that's not considered salvage. And when you have 18 feet of stacked cars, people are going to notice that a lot more than they notice a silo or or the pipe. I mean, you see Bunnings Pipe Yard. I mean, I don't know how high they stack. I don't, they don't stack that high. No, probably not pipe, but I mean, you stand the tank up. You bet. You know, all, and that, if, if they have a tank, it's oil field equipment. Mm -hmm. If I have a tank, it's salvage. The yep. same tank in two different yards. Yep. It's treated two different ways. But a tank is different. Uh, that's why I'm getting a tank is different there. Sure. And people are going to look at that different. It's like the concrete. They said that's busted up concrete. What is that doing there? It's an eyesore. They're going to look at that. The screening, I agree with you. The 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 stacking, I'm I agree with the county. I really do. Because like uh Mr. Uh, Richard said, you know, we have to everybody has to abide by the same rules and I agree with that. The fencing I think it might be a little extreme. Maybe something we can yeah. talk about, yeah. But the stacking I have to agree with uh the uh, Megan and Eric. I'm, you know, that's just my thought because I have to follow the same rules also. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what about when uh like I bring a semi trailer in that's 14 foot tall? That's that's one unit though. That is that's just one unit. That's okay. one unit. I mean that's it is what it is. I mean that's what it's built. It's like a silo. It's the same thing. It's that's one unit. When you have three cars, if let's say you smash them down to two feet, you can get three cars stacked up there. Feet there, there's three cars in that one space. I just want to make sure that there's you, you know that there isn't any problems with some of the the wording when I do bring in like say a wrecked semi trailer uh there's something in there about six feet standing at the lot line. Uh, I think it would be now. I don't know for sure, but I would think that's that would be one specific unit. You're not going to smash a semi. No. Yeah. Madam Chair. Yes. A uh, point of clarification on that uh, criteria number, or excuse me, condition number five. It says vehicles cannot be stacked higher than so six feet. Where yeah. Mr. Doak is coming from, a uh, semi would be considered one vehicle as long as nothing's going on top of that. We would yeah. be okay. And another point of clarification, um, I, I know back in 2015, most of the zoning regulations got a complete overhaul. Um, the specific requirements for impound and storage yards, the screening um, and the stacking came into play. Those are there. But as you notice, uh, when we go through the criteria for that, it is up to board's discretion to put it on there. This will... Um, per staff recommendation, we can renew it for two years. You guys can put a condition on it um, and see where we're at in two years. And if we need to go in and add something or change something, we can do it at that point in time. Um, more what I was trying to do is just uh, bring to light what current regulations are for these properties. I know there a lot of the impound and storage yards that we've done fairly recently have been um, I would say with the exception of Susan Chapman's, the LJT towing last week, most of those are fairly historic in where they're at. Some of them even predate zoning period. Yeah. Um, when the county came in and put the zoning on it, was it probably the correct zoning at that time? I, I would agree with Mr. Flyman yeah. on that. It probably wasn't. Over time, the county's tried to come in and get um, more properties in compliance with it by the county taking the load saying, hey, this is what you guys are kind of using it on. I think this is going to be better. It will help you in this respect of things. Um, I can't remember when Joey, uh, excuse me, Mr. Flame went back and bought these properties, but I do believe this um, subdivision has been there after zoning. It was always zoned as an industrial park. Um, so that zoning's ever changed. I think he did a great job in picking heavy industrial um, this is definitely where we want to see those things, but a lot of the other properties that have been brought up, most of those were grandfathered anyway, and then the ones that weren't, such as the LJT towing, um, we're slowly bringing stuff into compliance as things come into our offices. Thank you, Megan. All right. I think we're good. We're going to go ahead and um, open it up to public comment. Um, if, yeah, so yeah, if you want to go ahead and sit, you're good. Thank you. Um, if there's anybody in the audience that would like to talk in favor of the conditional use permit, if there's anybody that is against the conditional use permit in the audience, or just like to say anything in general. Hearing none, we'll close the public comment and we're going to open it back up to the board. Um, 
for any other suggestions. I'm fine with um, not having the entire property screened if we have the front and maybe half of the sides something um, and, and kind of meet in the middle possibly on the screening. I don't know how everybody else feels about that. Highway side. Yeah, highway yes, side. correct. The visual side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I can also uh, sympathize with the applicant. I mean, you've got one piece of property you I can agree. stack on, and then you got one virtually across the street that you can't stack on. And, and But I also understand how the rules change. And unfortunately, it seems like this is one of those that falls in the middle. Yeah. And and so um, so there, I sympathize with that. Uh, but like I said, we do have to start somewhere with with what we do on the rule changes as well. Yeah. So, um, Madam Chairman, um, the vehicle uh, stack height, um, that six feet that matches the height of the fence. Is that the reasoning for that stack height? I believe so. Um, when you go in and look at um a typical fence you're going to be six foot above finished mm -hmm. grade so just trying to visually block what you can from it i believe that's where it came from um i unfortunately was not here in 2015 so i can't yeah. speak to that 100 percent. but i i would i believe that's where that came from so i guess what i'm getting after is if the fence was say 10 feet high could we stack 10 feet high and still have the screening to keep that visual overlay intact is there already a fence established and it's six feet? Is that correct? Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Mr. Flyme, and the fence uh, around the entire property. Six foot all the way yeah, okay. it is around the entire property okay. already. Adding a 10 foot fence is not cheap. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Madam Chair, I, I agree. I think that you know the stacking. I think we uh, like we have to we have to keep in check with what we have been doing. But the fencing, uh, if we was to do the front of the the uh, the property and to the highway side of the property to the one ninety one side of the property mm -hmm. to limit that, I'd be all for that. Also, I agree. Any further questions, or would anybody like to make a motion? I'll make a motion we accept with the conditions of the fencing on the front and to the uh, 191 side with still the stacking of the maximum of six feet to the height of the fence. And, all the other and, all the and with all the other recommendations, okay. I'm you. sorry, yes. Thank you. We have a first, do we have a second? I'll second that. Do we have any final discussion questions for either Megan or Mr. Flame? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carries. I hope that's at least a, a partial, you know, fair fairness to, okay. I have my other yard to go on. I, I'm not stacking road against at the other yard. I have approval for it. Yeah. But I mean, I just thought I'd ask for it. Absolutely. It yep. No, absolutely. Because now is the time. Yes. <laughs> so, but I, I I do think that, you know, this hopefully will work. So. Yeah. And we realize everything costs money and we try to help. We do. We try to help as much as we can. <laughs> it does. Oof. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, we will move into public hearing number three, um, Rose Rock Holdings, Loves Travel, Stop and Country Stores, a conditional use permit. And I will turn it over to you, Eric. Thank you, Madam Chair. So the property owner is Rose Rock Holdings, or as we know, Loves Travel, Stop and Country Stores. And it's an 18.36 parcel, 8901 Highway 374. And it's approximately 4,000 feet from the Jamestown Rio Vista residential subdivision. It's currently zoned commercial infrastructure, Green River fire response. It's on Jamestown Rio Vista water and sewer someday, Rocky Mountain Power and the proposed sewage holding tanks and Dominion gas. So here is a map of the site, which shows you the location and then the aerial photography. 
So they're requesting conditional use permit approval for sewage holding tanks. And this is for the truck travel stop. Um, the sanitary sewage will be routed to four 21,000 gallon tanks. And we'll have pictures of that coming up. They're frack tanks sized uh, to hold the seven day rolling average volume. And that's coming from DEQ, just so you know that requirement for the seven day. These holding tanks will be pumped out on a daily basis and hauled to the Green River Public Works facility. So as you know, this has been going on. DEQ is requiring a permit, so that's why we're here today to get this approved. And, in, and so that they are also in compliance. They have applied for a conditional use permit and we were quite aware last year. Uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission did vote to approve it. Uh, Board of County Commissioners voted against and produced findings of fact, conclusions of law on December 4th, 2022. And again, that is not for the same. The reason why we're able to hear this is this is a substantially different permit. And so that's why we're hearing this today. This is a different permit. And here's the application. I do have Amelia Jordan that's online. So when I'm done with my presentation, she can fill in any gaps that I, on the information and more detail on the actual um, DQ requirements. And again, here's the site plan. It's gonna be located to, this, to the southeast of the property is where those frack tanks will be located, where they're pumped out on a daily basis. And these, this is just right here, uh, profile pictures of the frack tanks. Okay, so we have to go through the criteria and we'll go through this real quick because we've gone through this several times, all right? And so we know it's a travel stop, uh, maintenance shop all, uh, provides uh, for truck parking off of Interstate 80, which was definitely helpful this year in this uh, rough winter. The um, proposed sewage process that they're proposing today is going through the DEQ process. Um, again, this is due to the failure of the existing uh, septic system. The request is compatible with existing or allowable uses of adjacent properties. Uh, again, that's commercial. As far as the use, um, that has been approved the conditional use for the travel stop years ago. And surrounding properties, um, mostly undeveloped to the south. And we'll see what happens in the future with uh, when sewage, the sewer line goes out there and then the um, to the west is BLM and then you have commercial properties to the east. The request can demonstrate adequate facilities. Currently the applicant and owners having to pump and truck the sewage to the city of Green River. And this can, the request can demonstrate adequate provisions for maintenance of the use and the owner shall be responsible for full compliance with DEQ requirements. The request is minimized to the greatest degree possible adverse effects on the natural environment. That's why they're going through the DEQ process. Obviously the best long-term solution for them is, is to hook onto public sewer. And as you're aware, that was under the six cent penny. I've also been in contact with uh, Jamestown Rio Vista's engineer and they are starting their master plan with that. Staff recommends as a condition, you'll see that later on, that when the sewer line is within 600 feet, the owner shall make a connection to the public sewage system when the sewer, once the sewer line is operational. We don't see any undue traffic congestion and no adverse public health, safety, or welfare. And in order to conform with the provisions of resolution, that's why they're here for conditional use permit approval. Colorado Interstate had no effect on our pipelines. The Y dot just to, these are the same comments that came in on the original conditional use. And I did speak with the applicant yesterday and they are working through that process this week to get those inspections done so we can get Love's truck stop can get those uh, issues resolved with Y dot. Andy Pleasant had some concerns. I don't know if there was confusion on sewage holding ponds and we are not approving sewage uh, sewage holding ponds. And that's, that's what his um, concerns were. Staff recommends approval with the following conditions. All DQ requirements are maintained for the duration of the conditional use. 
The condition use is approved for a period of time, time period of five years. Um, hopefully that's enough time to, um, at, we obviously we don't want this to go on forever, <laughs> hauling a sewage, so put a time frame on there. When a public sewer line is located within 600 feet, which comes from Wyoming statute, the owner shall connect to the public sewer line. Once the sewer line is connected and operational, hauling of sewer sh shall then cease. All comments dated on May 19th, 2023, submitted from Darren Kaufman. The YDOT traffic engineer shall be addressed within a six month time frame. And that's all I have, Madam Chair. And again, Amelia Jordan is online. Thank you, yeah, Eric. Amelia, is there anything that you would like to add to Eric's presentation? I'm assuming there is. Just a couple of points I wanted to make. Um, one is that um, Zach from Loves is, has joined us. He's one of the divisional um, managers, environmental managers, and I believe he's in charge of this, this location. So he's listening in um, as to, uh, so I, I don't know if he's going to have any comments or not. I know he's driving. Uh, the other thing is, Eric, could you go back to the slide uh, that showed the close-up of the frack tank with the access road? One more, one more, one more. Well, no, actually that might be a good one. Go back to yeah, that right one. there. There you go. Yeah. So right now that access road that's shown, it does not exist. Um, I know the entrance I believe is coming off, uh, it was a 374 right there. Um, and so one of the uh, improvements we're gonna be making to the property um, is to add this gravel access road so that it's coming from the Loves property and not from um, any other roadways. So that will be a new uh, gravel, gravel access road and turnaround. Um, and I also wanted to um, just kind of reiterate that that this is what we're doing now is pumping and hauling um, with two frack tanks on site. Um, I thought there was a picture of those, maybe I missed it, but um, we would be adding per um, DEQ requirements, we'd be adding two more frack tanks to, to be able to hold seven day rolling average, although it never gets I don't think we've ever even filled the second tank, um, but to be in compliance. And also there will be some improvements um, made to comply with the EQ requirements, such as, um, you know, some possibly some co concrete foundations. We have um, to heat tracing, doing some spill containment, some level monitoring and things like that. Um, some more permanent lines rather than using hoses. So not only are we good, we're going to be doing the same thing we're already doing, but we're going to be making improvements to make it a little more robust and to comply with the EQ requirements. That's all I had really to add, if there's any Ms. questions. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for Ms. Jordan? I Eric, have a quick question. So with DEQ, and maybe we can talk about this in a minute, but like with DEQ's recommendations, um, like new utility constructions, these are old ones. So like the lighting that is not working out there, they're going to need to fix and comply with, is that correct? Or are these- Oh, the white out requirements? Yes. Okay. Um, these are what came directly from Darren. I'm sorry, what, what was the question? So like number three, the white out for any okay. new utility construction right away, blah, blah, blah. Like. The, there's a lot of lights, lighting that does not work out there. Okay, so yeah. is that something they're going to have to comply with YDOT to get that working or no? Do we know? I believe uh, my understanding is I reached out to them. I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, yeah, no, I please. reached out to Loves um, because after the last um, meeting, uh, these same questions came up or comments came up from YDOT. And my understanding is that those um, have all been addressed. And the comment they said was that Monday of this week, the final, I believe they said a box was going to be installed to, uh, for coverage, and they were going to schedule a, an inspection this week. So I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be, everything's going to be in compliance um, as of the end of this week. Okay, thank you. My concern is I live out there and I use that on-ramp a ton and you have all those trucks in and out mm -hmm. and there is no lighting that is working anywhere around there. It is a little difficult, so, okay. Thank you. Zach, did you want to say anything? Um, I know Amelia said you're driving. I didn't know if you wanted to hop on or if there was anything you wanted to add before we open it up to public comment. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, yes. thank you. 
All right, great. Um, I'm cutting in and out, but um, no, I, I don't have anything to add. Um, I think Amelia hit the, um, hit all the points we had. So um, no, I think we can move on to public comment. Okay, thank you. Madam Chair, thank what you. is, if Zach, you give, if you give your last name, please, for the minutes. Sorry, this is Zach Moore. Moore, thank you. Yes. All right, we'll go ahead and open it up to public comment. If there is anybody in the audience that would like to speak in favor of the conditional use permit. Anybody against the conditional use permit? I know we have one public comment, but I do believe like Eric said, it was a little misunderstanding of what we had today. Um, we are not doing um, a pond or anybody in general. Hearing none, we'll go ahead and close the public comment and open it back up to the board for any final questions, comments, concerns. I think um, one of mine is, is yes, we, we need to get something done with this. And I was hoping last time that's what we were doing. Um, we, we've got to have some sort of re resolution to this. Does anybody else have any comments, questions? Yeah, do something for them. <laughs> I just, I just want to make okay. sure that the um, YDOT comments make it into the recommendations. Okay. As well, we can do that. Yes, I agree. Okay. Thank you. Just include them into there. That's just a copy and paste. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. Thank you. All right. Would anybody like to make a motion? I'll make a motion. We uh, approve this conditional use permit with staff recommendations in addition to adding the white dot notes to it. Uh, Thank you. We have a first, we have a second. I'll second. Any final questions, comments? Okay, hearing none. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carries. Who would have thought this one was quicker than the last one? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Thank you, Amelia. So we'll we'll see you on Tuesday. Yes. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Amelia. Thank you, Thank you Zach. Bye. -bye. All right. Uh, moving on, other business bylaw updates and discussion of housing density. That sounds fun too. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. So just so you know, the bylaws will be. Um, submitted to you in August. So we'll hear that. So this will be something new for you because you're actually approving your bylaws, not the commissioners. So we'll do a notice of intent hearing. And what that means is um, we do this at the Board of County Commissioners. We usually don't do that here, but this is a case where it's your bylaws. So the notice of intent will happen and then we will post that for 45 days. And if there's any public comments back on those bylaws, and we can make any changes what you want at a notice of intent, then we certify them 45 days later. So usually a couple of months later uh, when we'll do that. Um, so I'll have those, I'll send those out way above, way ahead of time so you have them. So if there's any questions or you want some changes, we can do that. So that's it on that. Any questions on that? Uh, definitely simplified there. So the housing density. So right now, there's a, there are housing issues United, in the United States. Um, a lot of them have to do with affordable housing. And that can mean a lot of different things uh, as far as uh, you have your low income, your poverty, you've got your, uh, and then and then there's just something in the middle right there of housing costs. You're a realtor, Angela, so you understand. So in Wyoming right now, they're putting together task force. They're, they're, it's just a hot word, buzzword right now. That, is an developer that is interested in doing a development um, in the west side water and sewer uh, area. And so I reached out to Tracy today. I'm gonna have a conversation with her. I did have a conversation with White Mountain. Right now, our lowest, smallest lot is, is it 7,500? 7, 7,500 square feet. And for those who do developments in the city, that's that's not that small. Um, I think your smallest is what, for R1 is what, 6,000? So actually, when you get into townhomes, it's 2,000, because what you do is you put that lot line down the middle of the of the townhome, and then it's 2,000 feet, because uh, it's kind of seen as one building, 2,000 on one side, 2,000 on the other. 
And so when you're looking at the zoning in the county, and it's now this would have to be in areas where there's water and sewer. I mean, there's no really argument there that it's got to be on water and sewer if we're doing high density. But right now, our zoning prohibits townhomes. So if you wanted to do a townhouse development in, in the county, you can't do it because we also require setbacks. So one thing we wanted to look at now, and Megan and I met with the city of Rock Springs with the planner there and looked at their regulations is starting to look at, and other counties are doing it. So Laramie County is, Campbell County is. Um, there's some other ones too that allow townhouse develop. What's that? Park County is another one. Park County is another one too. So they're allowing down to 2,500 square feet. So just wanted to throw that out there. I haven't done any amendments yet, but any feedback that you have or concerns, let me know. But it's something um, we've got big projects coming in. So we we're no housing. and we have no housing. That's kind of in the middle of, you know, is it your one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to six hundred thousand dollars? Say affordable is a key word there. <laughs> so Eric, yes. let me let me just kind of give you something to look at sure. too. Okay, go ahead. Is when you're looking at the lot size, twenty five hundred square feet for you know for a lot, you have to think of if we put something in there, they have to have some parking for yeah. You know, uh, either they'll have to be like a storage, uh, you know, a fence storage area in that development for yeah. parking or something, because people, even with the PUD, if no parking on the, you know, no, they'll have with horrible. no parking. Everybody parks on the street. So, yeah, yeah. we More have to figure one out. space of parking. Yeah. 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 And so just kind of keep that in mind also, because these low, uh, you know, trying to get affordable housing is, is great. But everywhere I see, it's always has all these vehicles in front of them. Yes. Yeah, and it's and I don't know how you get around that. Well, it's setbacks. You can you can set back things so that there is some on off street, sorry, off street parking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because in the county we've never had to really worry about parking um because of the lot sizes. I mean, two yeah. acres. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you better be able to find some parking on that, right? So um, or one acre. Most of our stuff is one acre lots. And so yeah, I agree with you. That's one thing that Kathy had mentioned from the city was make sure you look at and on the side too, because the camper trailer situation, right? <laughs> and a truck, yeah. right? A lot of people own trucks here, not just your standard nine by 18 always works. And so, um, you know, if you look behind Smith's where there's some townhouse development, that's the issue. It's not the two cars. It's that now most families have more than two cars, right? The boat and the camper and the four wheelers. <laughs> You're and the right. Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I agree with you. Those are some things we 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 need to look at. Um, and if anything, like it, when they provide a plat to at least show the, those as a conceptual so that you know that there's going to be enough space for that stuff. And they can, they can, they can develop it, as Rob well knows, too. They can develop it that... Uh, you know, they can have an HOA or something where people have to actually pay to park. And so it's not like they would be out anything. They could yeah. actually still get an income from that property they designate that for. So somebody's going to say, you know, we're going to yeah. do this. So they could do something like that to offset some of that cost and actually have an income. Yeah. Come in. One thing I don't want to pursue is PUD right now. I've just, no, thank you. Work. Okay. <laughs> no, they don't work. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It is anything. hard. Affordable housing is different for each county. I mean, we struggle with this at the state because Teton County is always trying to change legislation because of affordable housing. Well, they're their own little unit up there. Um, you know, their affordable housing and our affordable housing are two different things. Yeah. However, the housing crisis and crunch, that is everywhere. I mean, we have no housing. It, it is scary. And hey, Madam Chair, what would you say? As far as because you're you're in realty and so, mm -hmm. what is the challenge as far as price? Where's that gap that you're seeing? <laughs> and then it, it's hard right now because interest rates have gone up so yeah. much. Also, so what somebody could buy at three hundred thousand now they're back down to hundred and fifty because payments essentially have doubled. Um, you know that gap is between like two and four hundred. I mean it just is. Okay. Yeah. Well, can you fix the interest rates? For I you? wish I could. <laughs> <laughs> or the inventory. I mean, we literally in Green River have 13 houses on the market. In Rock Springs, we have, I want to say, 39. Oh. That is all we have. 
that's not enough. No. Take that back to when I was a realtor back yeah. in the 90s. I think we had 11 between Rock Springs and Green. Just Harris. crazy. And that was mm -hmm. impossible. Yeah. I mean, and that's from a, a mobile home to a million dollar house. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any other? Well, if the county can do it, I mean, uh, Eric, if the county can help with that. Yeah, I think it's a bonus. Our and I think do. we should absolutely I get, too. I think we're still behind the curve, but as far as I don't feel like either city is really doing anything to, and maybe they are, and I just don't know it to, you know, help with this situation. They so don't. Oh, I, no, I don't, don't. well, that there's, I'm trying to be nice. Um, <laughs> well, I'm not going to be nice. They don't help. Uh, I'm trying to be nice, but <laughs> if we can, as a county do that, where we have a little bit more space yeah. and, and get in front of it somewhat, I think that's amazing. And we, and we need to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm that's awesome. But we're kind of limited, uh, you know, it's probably, probably with the county is there's only so many areas we have right. water and sewer to. That is true. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. that's the limit. Jamestown out there that will help open that up immensely. Um, North of town that we have the water, but we really don't have the sewer yet, you know? Right. Yeah. yeah. Sewer is the big problem because you, if you don't have public sewer, you have to have septics, which means you have to have space. Yep. Yeah. 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 Right. And then That's true. Not, you know, your, your replacement you know. fields, all that, right? You know, so American Place initiated a task force to look at the housing issues. And I believe there, and I'm, and I'm following it right now, there'll be grant opportunities. So maybe for infrastructure through, uh, omnibus bill that was signed by the president so so maybe there's some opportunities there to because it is a nation you know i know we're saying sweetwater county and the state and and, i agree and teton county right and sheridan now yeah. sheridan is now turned into their issues there nationwide thing and, it, and it's that gap like you're talking about that it's just become and then with the interest rates on top of it just makes it even more uh, of an issue so anyway that uh, i Probably schedule a workshop in the future, but just so you know, I'm reaching out to water and sewer districts to talk to them about it so they're not caught off guard and that they understand what's going on, that what we're doing, what their feedback is on it, and follow the grant opportunities, work with the cities. And so that's all I have, Madam Chair, on that. Just wanted to make sure you were aware of what we're trying to work on there. And just, that's great. just one, Eric, is would the BLM be open to releasing some of these lands that they have? That's a great question. I mean, as part of this, to you know, uh, potentially make those available that are, that mm -hmm. are in these areas that are the federal housing crisis across the nation. Yeah, weird. I think that needs to happen, and especially when you look at Yellowstone mm -hmm. and with the hopscotch development that's going on, that that we're, you know, that's promoted by that because you you can't develop in that section. And I, I like you like the open space and everything, but from an infrastructure standpoint, it's expensive because then you've yeah. got to extend a water and sewer line across that section to get to the property that you want to develop mm -hmm. and roadways. Then you got to go through possibly NEPA process to take a road mm -hmm. across it. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to see all those lands. That's my opinion, because I like to see growth and growth to be in an area, uh, you know, not where where you can have infrastructure and so that that's a little bit frustrating um you know when you when when with those big giant sections out there and i'd like to see that so i agree with that and i think those conversations need to happen yeah. awesome well thank you everybody we i think that went well um <laughs> wasn't sure on love so we will go ahead and adjourn it is 11 35